This happened a couple of days ago to me and my girlfriend. We were house sitting for my girlfriend's dad. My girlfriend's dad lives in a rather large house in a suburban neighborhood, just outside of one of the major cities in Denmark. What I'm trying to say here is that his neighborhood isn't exactly scary or dangerous by any means, which only meant that this gave us a bigger scare than it probably would have had it been in one of the more dangerous parts of town. After coming home from buying groceries and stocking up on necessity for our weekend stay at his house, we went to the living room to lie down and have some quality time for ourselves, which we hadn't had in a long time. Now before I go any further, just let me clarify the lay of the land here. This house had a rather large living room, and a floor-to-ceiling window at the end of the room. Outside this floor-to-ceiling window is a sensor-triggered light system. As we were lying there watching TV, I get this weird feeling that something is watching me. At first, I try and shake it off, like it's no big deal, thinking to myself it's probably just because I'm in a new house, where I don't yet feel entirely at home. But as I look to my girlfriend, I see too that she is quite shaken up about something. After a few minutes of silence, she then asked me if I have the same feeling as her. Like someone was watching us. I try to play it off as nothing, and I tell her that I'll just go grab a cigarette and check to see if anyone's out there, just to make her feel safer. As I turn my head towards the floor to ceiling window, I notice that the lights are on. Now this shakes me to my very core, and I quickly decide not to go out for that cigarette. By this time, I feel my girlfriend's hand squeezing my arm. As I turn around to her, I see her pointing at one of the windows, and outside is a silhouette of a person. My blood freezes. In that moment, I turn around and quickly grab my phone, and as I turned back, the person had disappeared. I call my parents as I know they were out at a friend's house not too far from where we were. My dad tells me to lock all of the doors and windows and just sit tight and wait for them to arrive. A couple of minutes go by and nothing happens other than me trying to get my girlfriend to calm down as I know how this affects her blood sugar levels and I would rather not have her have a seizure while a creeper or burglar or even a murderer is walking around outside the house. The silence is then broken by the sound of windows being tampered with. At this point, I'm trying really hard not to freak out and cause any further panic. But luckily, seconds later, I hear my dad pull up outside the house. My girlfriend and I have since discussed who it might have been, and we've come up with a few possible suspects. One of them being my girlfriend's crazy mother, who has a severe mental illness. The other more possible suspect would be just a simple burglar. I don't really care who it might have been. I'm just glad whoever it was didn't manage to break in. This past August, I picked up a lot of side jobs house-sitting while working at a ranch that gave horseback riding lessons. The families were all very nice and it paid well. This past November, I was house-sitting for a family and watching their Labrador retriever named Maggie while they were on vacation. They lived in a very nice neighborhood on the outskirts of a small town. The house was on the far end of the neighborhood, and thick trees flanked the backyard, and a dirt road ran behind the trees. I accidentally went down the road the first time, and tried to find the house, but there wasn't much down there. Just an abandoned house with lots of deer in the front yard, and a small run-down ranch house. The first night, everything was great, but the second night, not so much. I had this weird feeling a few hours before I went to bed, but I wrote it off as spending too much time reading creepy stories on Reddit. I made sure all the doors were locked, blinds were closed, and I went to bed just after midnight. But as I fell asleep, I still couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. Maggie usually sleeps with me, but that night she just followed me up the stairs and to the bedroom, and then just sulked back downstairs. At 2.26 a.m., Maggie woke me up by standing next to the bed and whining. I had just let her out before I went to bed, and I was pretty sure she didn't have to go to the bathroom. I rolled over and hoped that she would stop, but she didn't. I gave in soon enough, and as I climbed out of bed, I realized that the house was freezing cold. I followed Maggie downstairs to the kitchen, 
All the doors to the house were weird. You can't open any of them from the inside or outside without a key. Not to mention this was a very heavy door, not the kind that just gets blown open by the wind. The only thing that eased my mind was that Maggie didn't seem ready to kill an intruder and she'll usually at least bark at you. So I did a quick look around. I was too scared to do anything more. Nothing seemed out of place. The owners often left credit and debit cards, as well as wads of cash lying on the counters, and it was all there. If anyone was going to steal something, it was right next to the door, and easy pickings. But since nothing was missing, I tried to brush it off as just forgetting to lock the door. I made sure it was locked this time and went back to bed. Maggie still didn't want to sleep with me and went back downstairs. Less than an hour later, she woke me up again. This time, I didn't question her. I crept back downstairs more cautiously than I had before. The back door was open again. This time, the key that had been sitting on the kitchen counter was in the lock. Someone had been in the house with me. The police were called. They looked all around the house but found no one. Everything of value was still in place, so I was really worried about the intentions of whoever broke in. The family was shocked that something like that happened and have since moved to a large farm 20 minutes away and now have video surveillance. This happened to my sister about 15 years ago when she was still in high school and I was in middle school. Our mom worked as a house cleaner and always became friends with everyone's home she would clean. One of the homes was owned by an older couple who had no kids but had a huge house and a really nice pool that they would always invite me and my siblings to come swim in. The husband worked as a COO of a large airline company and they lived in a very nice neighborhood on a large lot surrounded by forest. When you were in their backyard, you couldn't see the other houses at all, just trees. It felt very secluded. Their house was very angular and architecturally interesting, with multiple levels made from stone. Pretty much every room had huge floor-to-ceiling windows that looked out over the backyard and gave great views during the day. At night, however, the reflection from the inside lights prevented you from seeing out, so it was always a bit unnerving to walk by them since you couldn't see what was out there. The couple also decorated with old Native American art and masks which was a little creepy to a middle schooler, but the couple were very nice and not so creepy, so I never got too scared. They had an older golden retriever named Samson that lived up to his name, as he was massive but had a sweet and gentle temperament. They also recently rescued a husky mix named Sadie, who was the polar opposite, Psycho Sadie, as we so lovingly called her. She had intense separation anxiety, and she would destroy their house whenever they left her inside, jump their short fence if they left her outside, and if they took her with them to run errands, she would destroy their car and howl non-stop until they returned. So since they were wealthy and had extra money, they would pay for me or my sister to come over and dog sit while they went out. We got 20 bucks an hour, so we were always excited to go over there and watch cable and swim in their awesome pool. Normally everything would be fine, and both dogs would usually just lay around. But occasionally, Sadie would realize that I was a stranger and go nuts and start barking at me, and I watched her eyes literally turn red. I was convinced that she was going to attack me, but she eventually calmed down after I got up from the couch and showed her how big I was. <laughs> not. But I digress. This particular incident happened over Easter weekend, while the homeowners were out of town for two days. They were paying my sister to stay there over the weekend, and I stayed with her the first night because it was a big house and kind of scary to stay there all alone. We stayed up late watching movies and eating junk food. The next day we swam in their pool and hung out, but for some reason I didn't spend the night again and I'm so glad I didn't because what happened that night scarred my sister for life. It all started when my sister was working out on their treadmill. Their workout room was on the bottom floor of their home, which was a walkout basement. Just outside the room was a huge sliding glass door that opened to their patio and pool. She had the TV on in their workout room. As she was running and watching TV, she thought she heard the house alarm beep like it did whenever the door was opened. She stopped the treadmill and went to look around and saw that the sliding glass door was opened. Now this door was huge, 
there was no way it could have opened by itself, so she was instantly freaked. However, the dogs were just lying there in the workout room, and she figured that they would have gotten up to investigate if someone had come inside, and because Sadie was a bit crazy and hated strangers, she thought that she might have accidentally left the door open, and just imagined the beep of the alarm, and that it could have come from the TV or the treadmill. She closed and locked the door and went back to working out. A couple of minutes later, she had the distinct feeling of someone watching her. She looked around, but no one was there. She finished her workout, but couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. She decided just to go to bed, as she was becoming a little creeped out, and just wanted to forget about it. She went around and made sure all the doors were locked. The owners didn't give her the alarm code, so she couldn't set it. She took a shower and locked herself in the guest bedroom, with both dogs, just in case, and eventually fell asleep. A couple hours later, she awoke with both dogs growling at the door of the room. Now, it was fairly normal for a psycho Sadie to growl and bark for no reason, but Samson had never barked or shown any signs of aggression, so immediately my sister knew something was up. She was shaking and trying to convince herself that the dogs had just heard an animal and that it was nothing. But then she heard the dreadful door alarm beep. She called my dad in a panic, crying and screaming, and he told her to hang up and call the police as he was on his way over. She called the cops, and my dad made the 15-minute drive in just under 5 minutes. When she opened the bedroom door to let my dad inside the house, the dogs took off running and barking through the house and downstairs to the basement. My sister ran screaming all the way through the house to the front door to let my dad in. He quickly took a look around the house with his gun, but did not see anything unusual. The police arrived a few minutes later and looked around the property. They found that the back gate was open, as well as the sliding glass door again, but not enough to let the dogs out. Just barely ajar, like it had been slammed shut and bounced back open a bit. They said it looked like someone had entered the home through the sliding glass door, because the lock was tampered with but they determined that whoever it was hadn't stolen or disturbed anything. When my dad asked why someone would break in and not do anything, especially with the dogs locked up, the police said that they had been notified by the homeowners earlier that month that the husband received a death threat because of a decision that he made at his job that put a lot of people out of work. They had gone to the police about it but didn't bother to tell my sister to keep an eye out for anything suspicious. Needless to say, we never dog sat for them again and they moved out of state within a few months because the husband lost his job. And if you ask me, he deserved it. There's always a reason to be afraid.